Okay, we are continuing our HTML5 Canvas tutorials here, and um, today we're going to be working with circles and semicircles. Last week we worked with arcs, uh, and very, very similar. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous tutorials, be sure to watch those. There should be an annotation to the entire playlist. Uh, and right now we're just going through the very basics of drawing shapes on a 2D canvas in HTML5. Uh, here's our basic HTML uh, setup. We got our HTML tags, header, body, and then inside our body we got our canvas element. And then we start our JavaScript down here. Um, now, uh, last time I put a X and Y position into uh, our arc uh, method. Uh, manually and this time I'm going to use a variable just to show you I wanted to show you that you could and if you've done any type of program you already know this you can put into functions uh, variables or the actual string or integer data um, but whenever possible it's usually best to put them into variables so here I'm going to say canvas x equals canvas dot width now this is something I haven't gone over before. You can get attributes from our canvas. So here we're getting our canvas width and we're dividing it by two. What does that do for us? Well, that gives us the center from left to right of our canvas. So if we want to center our circle in the middle of the canvas, well, this is how we get that information. And that way, if our canvas changes size, well, we can update X and it automatically knows rather than putting in a, a uh, integer that uh, you might have to go manually change if you change the size of the canvas then you gotta go change the number if you still want it centered we're gonna do the same thing for y uh, but instead of canvas dot width we're gonna say canvas dot height uh, height and um, we're gonna divide that by two so in this case our canvas is 300 pixels so dividing it by two would give us 150. The width is 600, dividing it by two would give us 300. So we could put those numbers in. Once again, if you change the size of your canvas, you would have to go and change each of those variables. Variables are very handy to prevent you from a lot of work when you change stuff. Um, so we're also gonna give our circle a radius. Um, and we'll go 75, I think that's what we did in the last tutorial initially. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to call the arc method, which is a function. Uh, first, we have to say context using our context uh, uh, that we've created up here. And we're going to say, once again, as always, begin path, because we're going to be drawing something. We've got to begin our path. Uh, and next, we're going to take our context, and we're going to call the arc method. And we're going to put... Uh, X and Y into there uh, and then we're going to give it the radius uh, and now this time uh, for what we're going to do is we're going to throw in some math here uh, we're going to say 0 comma and we're going to say 2 times um, and we're going to call a math function from JavaScript and we're going to say pi. So it's going to give pi. I don't know what decimal point JavaScript goes down to when it's calculating pi. You know, 3.14, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I'm sure it's pretty accurate. Yes. <laughs> I mean, how can you talk of accuracy when you're talking about pi? Because <laughs> it just keeps going, right? Um, so what this is going to do is going to allow you to start. This is your start position and then you got your end position so we're starting at zero and then we're going to go all the way around and basically to where we started and the way we figure that out is two times uh, pi uh, I'm not much of a mathematician I used to really love math but I've been out of school for ooh, almost 13 years now <laughs> so I don't, I don't know how they, they figure this stuff out. I'm sure someone will comment below. Someone smarter than me on that topic. Uh, and then false, that's whether we're drawing clockwise or counterclockwise. And uh, you know what? I haven't tested it, but I don't think it really matters since we're going all the way around the circle. It's just whether we're drawing uh, all the way around or not. 
Uh, and really, since we're drawing a circle, we didn't put these into variables. We could have. But if you're drawing a circle, and it's always going to be a circle, those things are not going to change. Now, well, we're going to get into semicircles and stuff here in a little bit. But uh, now we can say, just like always, context dot uh, stroke. Save that. Refresh up here. We've got a circle. And as always, since we're using the arc method just like we did last time, and as I said, arc method is just like drawing a line or a rectangle. It has the same little attributes you can give it. We can also say uh, context dot line width because it is a line that we're, well, it's not really a line, but in this concept we are, it is a line. Okay. Um, give it a, a width, a line width. So that's the thickness of the line. Uh, we'll set it to 15. We also say context dot uh, stroke style equals, and I'm going to say blue. I like blue. And refresh up here. Oh, forgot the R and stroke. Now, just to let you know, you know, I forgot the R and stroke. We got no errors up here, JavaScripts usually fail silently so that it, not to disrupt your website if you have something small it may stop the script but not cause all these alerts and stuff but as a developer I'm using uh, Chrome here and Chrome has a built-in thing uh, so does Firefox but I, I think uh, as far as Firefox is built in I prefer Firefox uh, Firebug although it's been a while since I've used um, Firefox but while we're in here if I hit F12 it brings up our little console down here I can go to the console tab and um, F5 I thought that it would give me an error here what I was about to show you is not true I don't know why it's not showing an error there I would think that if uh, I'm calling I misspelled something in the code and and it's not working it would show up there normally it does I'm sure someone will tell me why uh, it didn't get this but we'll say stroke there it was just a typo on my behalf now we have a blue circle. So just ignore the stuff I was just saying about the console. The console is a good place to go if you're having issues. Normally it will show you the errors there. I don't know why it didn't in this case. Um, so now that we have that, now we can also, just like a rectangle, we can give it a fill style, which is the color, and, uh, and then fill it. So let's go up here. We're going to say context, and we'll say dot fill style. and we'll say red and then we'll say context dot fill so that's kinda like saying stroke it's just for the the fill so you can set the fill style but if you don't actually fill it it doesn't matter what you set it to so there we go and of course if I move this down here it doesn't really matter uh, so much what order we put you know the line with the styles in as long as the fill and stroke are after uh, the attributes we're setting to them. Okay, so that's drawing a circle. Uh, what I'm going to do now is save that. So once again, I'm using Vim as my text editor. I don't know if I said this at the beginning of this tutorial. Um, Vim is a text editor that I prefer. Use whatever text editor you prefer. Uh, I'm going to copy what we just created because I'm I'm going to try to upload all these to my Pastebin account. If you guys want to look at them, there should be a link on my website, hopefully, uh, to all the scripts that I post on my Pastebin. Um, and if not, on MetalX1000 at Pastebin, I think you can search that. But I'm going to copy this to uh, semi or semi, however you pronounce it, basic.html. And so I've copied that. Now I can just go Vim, and that will just save us some time typing some stuff because we're going to draw a semicircle, and it's actually going to be similar. Uh, so it's actually just like drawing an arc. <laughs> um, so if instead of doing pi like so, let's say I put in uh, 2 here. And I save that, and I have five. Refresh this. Oh, right. I have to actually go uh, to the new file, uh, semi. So there we go. I have drawn an arc, and I have filled it. But it looks kind of weird because it's not really filled 
it's it's if you want to make a shape like that but let's also cap it off so what we're going to do here is in our context we are going to add in a close path once again case sensitive capital P there and so we're going to close our path anytime you're drawing a path uh, I believe anytime you're drawing a path you can close it by doing that and we'll just close the two ends so if I hit F5 there you can see it takes from one to the other there uh, also I mentioned in a previous tutorial uh, that we can also do um, uh, what you call it uh, the caps the line caps should fit into this so by default it's doing it but <laughs> that just sounds funny okay uh, context dot um, what was I doing again all right the line cap um, we can say line dot I'm sorry line capital C cap and we will set that equal to and it can be square uh, but or I'm going to do round in this case but is the default and if we refresh this I'm not sure if this is no I thought that would work so that's twice I've tried something in this tutorial that did not work <laughs> um, I thought that would give a rounded edge to this little sharp point there I think maybe if I don't close it there it gives that a rounded edge so without that round it will default to butt or you can put butt in there we'll save that and it's flat but with the round in there it's rounded but that doesn't really matter if you are closing the path I wonder if the order of that matters let's let me put this up here P nope does not matter so as far as I know you can't round off those edges I'm sure there's probably a way I just don't know so as I mistakes make mistakes you learn from my mistakes so so that's how you close the path which gives it a little more of a shoot there um, so that's a semicircle which is basically an arc but we're closing it off giving you that semicircle feeling there uh, so you know we could also if we were to set the fill style to blue as well once again the, the when you're giving it the color the color scent case doesn't really matter so there you can also do that the fill color doesn't have to be a different color than the style color giving you kind of a half circle there so uh, that's it for this tutorial I hope that you're enjoying these tutorials on uh, on HTML5 canvas once again we're just going over the basics now we'll be moving into more advanced stuff as time goes on I thank you for watching I hope that you enjoy them visit filmsbychris.com that's Chris with the K there should be a link in the description if you do like these HTML5 canvas tutorials and you're looking forward to the fun stuff as we get into uh, 3d elements in the canvas uh, definitely comment below uh, give a thumbs up let me know that you're liking these so that I know people are enjoying them and I hope that you have a great day